So the objective is to, again is to try and enhance your fishing okay? to get more out of your time than you have to go to, which is always, always a bit of a hassle of time and then you have the weather to fight against as well. So, so here we go. Anyhow, um, like I said, up here and we'll, we'll go. Okay, so well, well, my name's Doug Burt. Well, I'm the wife and sucker here. My son, Lee, who's downstairs, helping someone. He'll be up shortly. And uh, yeah, we do a lot of fishing, a lot of squidding. I love squidding. I love eating squid more than I love catching them, actually. Um, and I'll talk about that tonight. And it be all the squid, not just the body part. How many people here eat the head part? Tentacles. Okay, about half a dozen. The other 14 of you, you should try. <laughs> it's really good. We'll talk about that tonight as well. Um, so we'll run through the gear. I'll start off with the gear first. Um, well, I sort of use the squid. It's up to you guys what you want to use, but just joking, that's not what I don't use that much. <laughs> <laughs> um, what, what I really use, and, and there's a bit of a, um, they're getting better though. A lot of people think, okay, because squid fish, and I need an Ica rod or a squid rod. Um, please understand that the rods that we get given to us, um, they're getting a bit better now, but prior to the last few years, have been more designed for other markets, particularly in Asia. And those guys are generally fishing, uh, some of them fish off the boats too, but they're generally fishing um, off the rocks. They need to cast a long way, so they use a very long rod. You don't need a long rod, you need a soft rod, okay? Second thing is, um, they're catching squid that can be huge or generally bigger. So they're like, okay, our biggest green eye or calamari squid, if you call it, tiger squid. So if we catch the Gold Coast, might be two kilos, so that's their sort of small size, so they need a heavy rod. So if you look at, um, Okay, some of their rods. This is actually getting a bit better design. This atomic is actually more designed for Australian style because it's a softer tip than the traditional ones. But like the rating is P1.5 to 3, which is 50 pounds. So we don't use 50 pound braid for our squid. So um, your rating should be like sort of 0 0.6 to about 1.5 max, okay? Or maybe 1 P1. So I'm generally only using anywhere from about four or six pound braid through about 15 at the most, okay? So, and that's a long rod, and if, as you know, around a little tinny, it's quite awkward to hook a big squid into, under your arms with the tip going over and he's hanging off his tentacle, and it's very difficult. So, um, stick with the shorter rods, sort of that six foot six to seven foot six at the max. Um, you can get shorter versions of that style. There's another Shimano one. Um, the rating on this one here, is um, medium light, <laughs> three to six kilo, but um, obviously a little bit softer in the butt, particularly, and a bit shorter. It's about seven six. Um, I like to use quite quite light rods like this style here. So anything you use for your flatties or your brim is fine. So I guess you will wear that type of rod around six foot six, six ten, seven foot seven six. Um, with a very soft tip, so a very, very soft tip, and uh, and light braid. I think that braid there is about 10 pounds. It's probably about as heavy as I use. Um, and whatever other rod I have in my boat at the time, which happened to be this one at the day, is actually Liam's heavy rod. Um, we just use that for our set line, which I'll talk about a bit later as well. And I think on that might be, well, it's going to be 10 pounds as well. But um, 15 is about the max that you want to use. So most of you should have that sort of gear, okay? Um, the, the real important part, besides the light tip rod, is if your rod is a bit heavy, um, it doesn't, uh, you won't lose many squid with a heavy tip, heavier tip rod, although it's better to use a lighter tip, but because it's all in drag, okay? So when the squid pulls, if your drag's smooth and light, you'll have no uh, discrepancy of the squid um, pulling off or the tentacle snapping off, because it's give, okay? So you'll see on the videos when I'm fishing, my drag's constantly like it's running out of the time because they are pulling on it. But if I have my drag locked up and my rod is a bit too heavy, I'm probably going to snap its tentacle off because they're very soft. They're stretchy, but they snap quite easy. And as soon as you get a little bit of stick, a bit too much, um, you just get the piece of the tentacle back. So really important to have a good drag of the reel and, uh, and quite light. So reel size, you're around 1,500 to Probably 3,000 at the biggest size. Two and a half is really good. 
Um, and leader size, that's probably the next important thing. I'd like to use about eight or 10 pounds, sort of. I think you've all got some in your bags there. But uh, fluorocarbon, definitely. And I run about a meter in length. Just enough that sort of they don't see the braid. And uh, what's the meter? Uh, eight or 10 pounds, okay. yeah. And about a meter long. Mm -hmm. um, I generally join it with not too big a fancy knot, so I just use an all bright, or improved all bright. In that size line, like eight pound lock braid to eight pound lead is quite thin, or 10 pound leader. So I keep it um, very tight and very, very snug. Um, on the bottom here, uh, sometimes I use those, you know those little clips, I didn't bring any up, I got them downstairs. They're like a little loop on one side and the other one's got like a pigtail on it. And you just change the squid here, because the squid are really pedantic about colors some days. Some days they want gold, other days want pink or whatever it might be. And quite often I find out the way because my kids outfish me and I look at their squid jigs a different colour to mine. So I quickly change over to the same colour. Um, and it's, it's very easy just to take it off and off the loop of the pigtail and put it back on again, okay? So, great little thing to use, but... Can I just throw a question in mm. there? If you don't have someone in your boat that's out fishing you, mm. how long do you go before you change the colour if you very know good question. in the zone? Very good question. I'm always fishing two rods on my own, if actually I run three. You're allowed to use three rods on your own in Queensland, let you know that too, by the way. So I run two, I call just floaters, or just they're just sitting out there. Different colour, different colour, different colours. So I've still got three colours going, Brian, but... Um, and if one colour's getting more than the other, I will switch the other two or whatever. I've got, I've got to carry bloody maybe 15 different squid jigs in my boat at, at any one right. time. So, um, But... Uh, they're generally a bigger squid jig, so then I stress, do I need to put a bigger squid jig on my casting rod, you know, <laughs> because yeah. they're going to call it a nose. But I think it's more of a colour thing. But it's a 20 minute thing? You yeah, look, look probably, probably. Uh, I'll probably put a, patient fisherman? <laughs> <laughs> I'll probably down the cast, and I'll probably say around about a dozen casts. Okay. Yeah. Or if they're not happening in that area, do I that's, move the area? That's, that's, that's the, the other thing too, you know. <laughs> That's always the, the oh, big question. Is that the squid's doing yeah, something wrong. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, sometimes I bite on tide too. So it's like any fishing, you know, when do you, do you, when do you move? And sometimes the fish will come in the bite a bit later. But, but don't be afraid, just keep changing. No, 100%, mate, keep changing, yeah. So you find the colour. Which I can talk about a bit later. There's a lot of colours here and styles and types or whatever. Um, but getting back to the gear. So we've done the line, we've done the rods. Um, definitely braid. Uh, what is braid? It's just that you can cast a little squid jig a long way. And one thing I found with squid, you don't have to cast close. You can cast 100, or you can't cast 100 metres, but you can cast sort of 30, 40 metres, no problems at all. And if you do get one straight away, it'll just come straight at the top out there. They don't fight too bad unless you get the big ones on. So you just got to slowly wind it across the surface. If it wants to pull, let him, if you've got your light drag set, let him pull it and take it. Um, but don't be scared to do a long cast and really search around, around you where you are. How many people here don't have a boat, by the way, in the land-based? Okay, cool. So I'll cover it for you guys, because I still go land boats fishing too, even though I have a boat, because a lot of my spots work better off the land, so I'll let you know that tonight as well. We'll talk about that. Um, so getting back to Brian's question one more time, um, just put it down to persistence, see there you go. If there's a tide change, then maybe you hang out with that same colour, but is that really long as it's going to change, it might come on the tube or whatever it might be. Um, Otherwise, if you think the areas, there's nothing there, then you move. But I, even, I definitely put um, at least one more rod out with the, just, just hanging in the, in, the, in the rod holder. If you're land based, you can't do that, mate. You gotta, you gotta just, you gotta just, because <laughs> you're not moving that at all, drifting, you know? So you just gotta um, keep casting until you think it's enough casting and change maybe, or change location. Um, the other thing too is, I. Don't use my electric motor at all when I'm squidding because I believe you, the, the squid are more, they're, they're moving all the time, they're looking around, they're, they're in the area. And if you can find a lot of bait in the area, they're going to be on the bait. So drift to the bait or let the bait, drift with the bait or whatever it might be, you know. Um, there's definitely always feeding. Um, I don't know if you know this, but like most squid only last about a year. That's their growth cycles from go to woe in one year pretty well. So. The arrow squid we're catching a few weeks ago, or say two months ago, which were all that size, and now like already the body's about probably 25 centimetres. They're getting really big really quick. It's, I don't know how much they eat, but they must eat a lot. There's a lot of bait in the broadwater at the moment, so it's really good. Um, 
Okay, uh, that's probably about all on that sort of stuff. Any questions on the gear at all? Go to the lures next. It's a hard part. Okay, lures. Um, I've got about 30 squid jigs in front of me here, all which do work and at different times though and different applications. So I'll start at the right at the smaller size. So I'll pass this around as it goes around too. Um, these are little emeraldus, which is um, it's a name for squid, I think, but it's used by Dyer. Um, it's a 1.8, which is very tiny. So sometimes when they're feeding on really small bait fish, you've got to match the hatches in all fishing, okay? So there's no point throwing out something that size when they're feeding on bait that size, you know? Unless you get a greedy one, you might take it. Um, but you fish small, but generally speaking, I don't fish much that's that size. I might go down to a two, which is that size there. Okay, it's very tiny. That's a size two. Um, but generally speaking, uh, two two point five is my go-to, and on my my dropper ones, the ones that are just drifting in the rod holder, um, I'm running about a three. And if it's a bit windy, I run a three point five, or I'll switch and put a um, a little tiny bee sinker on the top of it, just sitting right above it. And I've got heaps of squid doing that. A lot of people say oh, it's scared of my ring. No, it doesn't. So run a little bit of a bit of a pea sinker, a size zero ball or one ball. What's the three? What's the the weight, what, what's the 3.5? Uh, represents, that? yeah, good question again. It represents size, so that's 2.5 inches, 3 inches, 3.5 okay. inches, yeah. The weight, uh, there's all different types, Brian. There's like um, these little fellows here have a little, little tiny hidden inside weight, so really slow sinking. Okay, um, this little fellow here, which is even smaller, has a bit more lead in it, so it's a little sink. So the 2.5 has nothing to do with the weight? No. Okay. No. It's the size, so you can have 2.5 with five different size weights, different brands on it. Yeah, all 2.5s. On your set line, though, you would mm. still run a bigger jig. I do, because as soon as you're getting wind or drift or current, it tends to float up a bit, you know. So I mean, don't rather than you said you could have a heavier 2.5, could you? Ah, uh, you could do that. You could do that. Um, again, I like to feel the feel what's happening. So sometimes they like a bigger jig. Um, but I was, I'll definitely catch them on 2.5 if I can get it to stay down. Yeah, 100%. Yeah. You can also get those little weights that slip yep. over the head. Yeah, you can get a little cone weight on the head and you actually get, um, some guys use the soft wire and wrap it around the body. Okay. If, if you've seen it, but it's, still, right. it's like a soft wire wrapped around the body. Yeah, and that pulls the head down. It was put on the head head end. Yeah, I thought all yep. the, the Yamaha Shida brand one. Yeah. I think they split weights. Little cover weights. Yeah, I've got yeah. skull yeah, yeah. I've never used them, but yeah. I've yeah, no, okay, give it a go. Um, they probably, probably will work. I, I'd rather, I just find it easy to throw a ball sinker and it still seems to work. So, but in, uh, if they're a bit fussy on the day, probably for calamari squid, the green rice squid. Yep. We'll do that. But um, tonight I'll probably, I'll probably try and do both squids as I'm going along because they're, they're very similar. But the calamari squid, which is the green eye ones, have the bigger body and the bigger heads. Um, they're, <laughs> there are not many around this year yet, but like I said um, yesterday morning, it was 20.6 degrees um, water temperature, which is really warm for this time of year. Um, in the canals, it's only 17, but out in Broadwater, it's quite warm. And I think that's why they're not here yet. That needs to be about 18. So I think there's a few showing up, and I sort of got last night, got a couple off the Grand Boat Ramp last night, late, so about midnight. Um, but they're just, just starting to rock up. So. I think after this uh, cool westerly over the weekend, it's supposed to be howling 30 knots or something as always on the weekend. Um, it may hopefully improve our squids over the next sort of few weeks. But generally July is the best month, okay? July. So it only get better as each week goes on. It gets colder. Um, but we'll come back to the calamari squid soon. So um, getting back to the squid jigs. Um, so we go to a 2, then we go to 2.5, which is probably the most popular size, which is like that size there. Um, I catch them on $2, not $2, $12 squid jigs, <laughs> and I catch them on $30 squid jigs. <coughs> Do the Japanese ones work better than the standard Chinese made ones? I think they work a little bit better, they definitely swim better, but the big thing is they definitely last longer. So a lot of the ch ch cheaper ones, when you get like two or three squid, the, the cloth that it comes undone, and, or one squid will just like pack a big chunk out of the side of it sort of thing and it just, and just falls apart. The Japanese ones can get hammered uh, pretty hard, so like the Dyeras or the Yamashita's or the Ozuri's or Shimano ones or whatever. 
they all are definitely better quality um, than the cheaper cheaper brands. But some of the cheaper ones now are getting much better. So the much better than they were a few years ago. Um, but the latest thing in squid jigs is um, the technology is changing. So I don't know if you've seen the Flash Boost, which is a uh, Shimano product. I'll pass this around. There's a couple of here. These are both really, really good. They do a whole range of colours in there. And, uh, oh, no, they don't. For us older folk here, <laughs> elderly, more older folk I should say, um, if you remember the globes used to be in, in your lights at, you know, back in the day and they had like little tiny really light wire used to sit on the side of them and, they, and you just touch it and it used to bounce like that. Same technology, that's all they're using is like that technology from 40 years ago in that and holding a little bit of flash, just look at it and it, and it moves. Okay. Yeah, quite clever idea. So in the water, obviously the water it's always moving around so it's always shimmering like a bait fish. So quite clever. Um, and they come in cloth, they come in uh, one of the squid jigs going around is what we call a nude squid jig. So that's actually a little nude one, that one there too. So nude means it doesn't have any cloth on it, it's just a, like a painted or a clear type um, skin on it. So like plastic. Um, believe it or not, it does work really good sometimes. It does not need to have the cloth on it. But 90% uh, of squid jigs have cloth on it. Okay. Um, years ago, the cloth was always like a, if you remember, it's like a, um, a pearlescent sort of multicolour base on them, like a rainbow pearl. Um, some of them still do that, uh, but the technology these days is much nicer. <laughs> I'll pass it through a couple, couple of rounds. Um, particularly these, are, these ones are, are ones that own a squid jig with Japanese and major craft, which is also Japanese. Have a look at these that come around. You'll see the colour of those is um, quite enhanced back compared to the old days. Getting stocks really hard, as, as you all know, in every, every field of work at the moment. Um, so a lot of the, of the really good colours, we just can't get them at the moment. But they, they're coming through. The next type of colour, which is pretty popular, is like a bait fish type, like a natural type bait fish colour. Like a pilchard or a little slimy mackerel, whatever it might be. Um, they tend to work really well as well. Um, and there's a cheaper version here and a dearer version. I'm not going to pass it around, but they both do work actually. So um, then you get like your plain colours. So a lot of them are natural type colours. Um, and this is like a painted plain colour. So we call that just a plain colour. So it's not um, any, there's no foil colour behind it. So there are these three or four different foil colours. Generally the foils are either red, gold, like a bluey purple colour, um, and sort of like a, the rainbow type one that's coming around. That's just a painted one. But it was, the other day we caught quite a few squid, that maybe two weeks ago. Um, I don't know if it's on one of the videos, but you might see it. Um, so that's just a plain one. I'll pass that around. Sorry, bro, I don't want to throw them to you. So no, you're not. Cheers, mate. Thank you. I'm actually just checking the solids out. Yeah, no, that's all right. Um, and then you've got clear type, which is like a natural bait fish style. Even though this is just a cheaper version, it works extremely well. Um, this came out actually earlier this year. We tried it about probably two months ago and did quite well on that sort of style. Um, and then you've got um, ones with rattles in them. Um, so I personally haven't seen any better catches with rattles or no rattles. So so different with lures, lures are very good with rattles. So these are very high pitch sound. Generally lures are like a dull thud type sound, most lures, some are high pitch. I always find the dull, the dull ones work better, but perhaps this is the bait fish sound, I don't know. Um, but I'll pass it around too. That's actually, that's a bit heavier style brine too, by the way. In that same, you'll feel the weight of it, mate. Yeah, the nine any questions so far? I know there's a bit of stuff coming around, but just have a look at it. You'll try to understand it all. If, if you're just bait fishing at night mm. for a tailor, would you still put a, a sleeper out? If, if you, you don't have too strong current, mate. Yeah. But 100%. Mm -hmm. the, um, the two squids, the arrow squid are in the channels, and the calamari squid are around structure. Okay. You rarely get the, the, um, the calamari squid, um, or let's just say the, the green eyes, we're going to call them tiger squid. Let's call them tiger squid. Um, Swimming down the channel and hanging out in the channel. 
they generally will be, if they are, they're going to go straight to some sort of structure or, or eddy or something. Um, but the arrow squid, they seem to, the, their domain is in the general. Okay. They're quite different. Yeah, very different to the other squid. Uh, it doesn't need to even be weaved there, they're just, they're just there, sitting, sitting on the bottom. So you're not yeah. trying to catch arrow squid on the edges at 3 o'clock in the morning. <laughs> Why is that, did you? I spent hours there a couple of weeks ago. Night time's really hard. Just using my tiger squid experience, yeah, yeah. arrow squid. Yeah, different. Oh, we yeah. were 20, 30 metres away from where we caught on a few days after. Yeah, yeah. Just the move to the middle of the channel and bang. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's it's right. Don't, don't try and catch arrow squid in, the, in the calamari squid area. <laughs> that's right. Yeah, it, they're not there. So you get the best. You'll have the best wall and the best everything. You can pull that tiger squid out of there, but you will not get an arrow squid there. And I and like it's quite, uh, especially on the weekends. It's quite. It's like crazy because you're out in the middle of the channel. There's big Riviera's going either side of you, but that's where the squid are. It's just you got to put up to get guys calling you idiot for reading the channel fishing, but. That's where the squid are. So We've got to share it. You've got to share, share it, that's share right. It. That's exactly right. Yeah. Um, let's continue on the squid type jigs. We've got a bit, few more here to go. Um, I just want to show you the, the, the different foils. We're just talking about foils, but I'll pass these around. One's a gold foil, one's a silver foil, and I think that one's a red foil. No, it's not. There might be a red foil actually coming around already, sorry. That's a gold and silver. Okay. So when it comes down to colours, you got like pink on pink on say gold foil, um, blue on gold foil, purple on gold gold foil. It depends on the day of the foil colour more than the colour that's on top of it. So a lot of people say you gotta have a pink squid jig, but it's okay to have a pink squid jig, but if they want pink on red foil and you've got gold foil, they won't go for it. They won't go for pink because it's on gold. They want it on the red foil. Not a selling point you guys are telling the truth. <laughs> it's a, it's they're more interested on that shimmer than what colours on top of the shimmer. So if I was going to buy three squid jigs, I'd definitely have three different colour foils, but I had three different colour pink types, you know what I mean? More important. So remember that, please. Um, okay, a ghost type one, or these actually glow up something chronic. So most of your white type ones glow, okay? Um, definitely really good at night time. You add your sleepers, something like that style there. Um, the one that you guys have got, I think you've got one of these in your bag, the Japanese, the um, Eggy style one. It's a Luno one, so it'll glow up massively. It's also very good to cast at night time, whether it be from the land or from the boat. Okay, you can cast that big one too. Do you need to see where it's yeah, in the light? Uh, uh, just the sunlight's enough during the day, but night time, like you turn, you turn the lights out physically, do you mind? Over there, that's right, isn't it? Sorry, mate. I'll just um, give them one real quick hit. It won't take much. Because they've been downstairs all day. That should be right. Oh, I've got to turn the slide off. <laughs> Sorry, guys. Oh, right. you, can see, you can see. Oh, and I even can see. Can you? Yeah. yeah. Sorry, Liam. Sorry for the folks at us. Yeah, <laughs> that's right. <laughs> can you see that at all? Wow, yeah. yeah. And that one? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Good. Yeah. Thanks, Liam. Cheers, thanks, mate. Yeah. Cheers. So they do glow. <laughs> Thanks, Brian. Um, so the glow ones are, um, there's actually a glow one here too. The glow ones are um, really good for nighttime fishing. I find if I use, it, it, you're like a, you got your red foil or your gold foil there during the day, but nighttime it's glow. Okay? Glow is the most important colour, and then the other full colours might go after that perhaps. I see some people putting a glow stick about mm. a foot in front of their jig, whether or not the jig yep. glows. Does that, do you think that? Uh, will it help? Will it help? Yep. So um, glow sticks are really good, just the little 40 mil ones or 37 mil. Um, some of the squid jigs we used to get, we can't get them anymore though, they used to have a little slot that you used to put the little asylum stick inside and, and the whole belly glow up. Um, and then we had other ones that were LED flashing. Uh, the LED flashing in the, in the, in the belly ones, don't, they, don't make them, they don't do them anymore. Strange as, um, but uh, they've gone back to the glow body style, if that makes sense. Um, and then you get other squid jigs, this is a glow, it's a big one, it's a good sleeper one. And you'll notice a lot of your squid strikes, I don't know if you guys have caught many squid before, but a lot of your strikes tend to be in the center of the squid jig. That's where it gets most of its damage done on the cloth, okay? 
So um, this company quite a few years ago um, invented the, the center squidgy, which quite often gets caught up. Okay. When you pull through the water, it's quite funny because the squid jig, so the squid goes up in the water, just in current. <laughs> that it fight you like that, that thing sort of comes in sideways, that makes sense. Quite weird. So, but it's just a different thing, but uh, visually, I don't know if they see it, um, but when they're hungry, they'll just attack it anyhow. Obviously, all of these are emulating prawns, but you don't see many pink prawns around or glow prawns, but that seem to work. A uh, couple more things I want to show you. One is, um, is anyone use this type of thing for squid? Yeah. Okay. Um, I haven't tried on the arrows yet. I must admit I haven't tried on the arrows. I caught lots of calamari squid on these, especially under a float. Um, but um, has anyone tried them on the arrows yet at all? No. But if you want to chuck a line out like you're saying, Brian, with a pilcher line, and maybe a two ball or three ball to hold the current a bit, you'll probably use something like that, mate. Do you put those in through the head towards the tail? Or uh, it goes in uh, head first, I think backwards, actually. Because the, the, head's, the head's like, um, it's opposite way to the prawn, but it's very hard to shove it the other way. Yep. Not because it looks better, but it's just hard to go the other way. Yep. Head's easier, straight down the mouth to the back. Um, maybe something else could fill me in on that one, but <laughs> that's the way I've been using it. On back in the day, we used to catch the, the, the tiger squid on them. Yeah. Um, very popular down south. Now, a couple of years ago, maybe three years ago, I had a session over on, on the north wall of Waybreak one night. It was a full moon, it was beautiful. Um, high tide was about 9 or 10 o'clock, so I went out like about 8.30. And the tide, uh, by the time I got there and got organised and got out there, the tide was just on the top and then it trickled out for about an hour. In that hour, um, I don't know how many squid I caught, but I don't want to tell you how many squid I caught, but you might have saw photos on Facebook a few years ago. My boat was just black. I was on my own, the monster squid. And I um, was fishing in about probably eight foot of water. And I, my two, I had two rods going non-stop. The first rod I tried, I didn't have a float on it and I just put a squid jig out like a, like a sleeper. But because um, there's a little bit of, a bit of lunge in the waves, I kept getting caught on the bottom and I was, and I was I've got squid on this rod and this one's just nearly pulling out of the boat because I was just drifting around. And um, so I changed to a float, which I if you hear about down South Australia and whatever, Victoria, float system's really good. So I put a float on it and I put my squid jig about a metre under the float or a minute and a half, and uh, it just absolutely smashed it. It was amazing. They're just like a float like that style. So you can actually buy this type of system with a couple of squid jigs. They're cheap as too, like 15 bucks or something. Um, and that would work definitely, but I'd recut that because I've undone one the other day and they are way too long in the in, the, in between. So they must be fishing a bit deeper water down that way. But um, definitely an option is to go cut all that off and then just tie this, the float of the squid jig or put a stopper on it and, uh, and use it that way. Thank you. But floats are really good. Um, has anyone here used the, the system of like a patternoster with a squid jig at all? With a sinker on the bottom? So, yeah, it works really well. So another way of doing it, which I haven't done this season yet, but we did do it last year. But if you put like about a six ounce sinker on the bottom or a four ounce sinker, like a snapper lead, and come up about, I mean about a metre and a half, and then put a three-way swivel on, and run about a half a metre with your squid jig on it. And it just sort of sits there in the current, a metre and a half off the bottom, sort of a metre off the bottom, um, and works really, really well. So you're just drifting along with this, just drag in the bottom, but it's actually free swimming, just swimming along. The trouble is, it's hard to tell if you've got a squid on there because it's already bent over, so you, you don't really feel them because the arrow squid are not as powerful as the bigger tiger squid. Um, you don't feel or see much. So you probably need to use, I'll just use a lighter tip rod, I think. But you've got a big sinker that's going to be bent like that, but it will probably work. Yeah, so give that a shot. So it has to be moving the same way as the water? Uh, it'll it'll then, the boat will swing around, it'll then happen that way anyhow. Yep. It'll drag drag behind you all the time. Because yeah, that's the thing, if the sinker's dragging slower than the, the, the Oh, this, the, yeah. well, the squid will take the thing and go backwards. Yeah. <laughs> That's what you're saying. Um, I think it'll always be pulling from the other way. Yeah. Most times. Yeah, most of the current here is strong enough to always put you in a position where it's always been 
Draghi? Yeah. It's never the other way. Yeah, I think it'll pull behind that actually. Yeah. Yeah, yeah definitely. We just down the last couple of trips we've been out that mm. Jig's not travelling the same way as the current. Right. Yeah. No no bikes there. No bikes. Yeah. So um place like that would happen would probably be which we'll talk about marks in a moment, but like in front of the ground there's not much current. Or maybe um bigger uh or then the pool area, maybe which is all good areas for, for arrow squid. That would be probably the area. But once you get the main channel, I think you'd be pretty good yep. for run bay area. Um, another thing too, um, sprays and scents and all that sort of stuff. Okay, um, we find S Factor is really good. We used a lot of S Factor last year, didn't we? Extremely <laughs> good. So you all know what S Factor is, which you put on your soft plastics and that. Really good on squid jigs. Okay. Um, second thing is um, the they make the Eggy Max. This is the Glow Max. Not that it glows, but it's called Glow Max. I don't know why. Um, it says it glows, but I can't see it glowing when I've sprayed it and used it. Um, but most of these smell like um, this one's actually like a pheromone, like a, like a sort of like an S Factor type smell, which doesn't have much of a smell. The um, the other one in the yellow and blue spray is um, extremely good. So these are made by Eco Gear. They're Japanese, obviously, and really popular for spraying on squid jigs. You can use anything you want. I don't think aniseed spray works really well, but anything that's tuna oil based or or that sort of uh, prawn or maybe crab sort of um, base um, will works really well. Okay. Yeah, stuff Japanese, like it's around, you can get a price around 20, 25 bucks, something like that. It's quite expensive with the discounts. It's, it, yeah, it's about 25 bucks with the discount, but it's just um, extremely expensive for what it is. I'd rather just get some tuna oil and put in a little pressure pack and spray on there. <laughs> yeah. Um, I think one time, not now, but a couple of years ago, I actually dipped my head. I don't know, I had my boat, but I had some smoked oysters in my boat, so I dipped it in the oil and the smoked oysters and caught squid on. So, any, any type, oil type base works. Yeah. Um, okay, tools. Any questions on the squidgies going around? Just one. If, mm. you're, if you're going out at night, would you yep. use one of those float systems? With it? Um, I would if there's not too much current if you're land based, man. Uh, or if you can hold your line out there, um, or if you're fishing where the, where the say you fish on the southport for you, where the, you can be out towards the end and the currents that way, yeah. definitely, yeah, definitely, 100%. For those of you who want to try a land base, southport for you, if you fish there yet, mate, but it's probably one of the best areas around here okay. for land base, and it's the only place you can probably get to arrow squid from. There's a green marker about 40 metres or 30 metres out in front of it, and we catch them all around that area. In, in the boat, we're never at the jetty, you know. So you'll catch arrows good there, off the jetty. Okay. And we'll talk about that's other positions a bit later. Yeah. Um, okay. Humanely killing your squid. Two ways you can do it. One is you put them into ice, obviously ice in the in an esky or a bucket, and I'll breathe it in and go to sleep. Um, second thing is, I, I didn't have any here tonight, so I sold the last one. But um, like a ikijimi spike to to put them out of their misery. Um, supposedly, I can't see any difference in the flesh. Then I, we do a culture. I can't see any difference in the flesh in cooking or anything like that. But um, what it's like, it's just like a screwdriver, and you can use a screwdriver. All you need to do is just get a little grinder or a little file, and just file out the centre of a flat screwdriver. So you've got two little prongs on it, and maybe come in about a mil or two mil. So you've got two little prongs on it. Now all you do is you lay the squid flat down. So I should have brought a squid on tonight, but I didn't. His head's here, these tentacles are here. Sorry for you guys on there. <laughs> um, actually, I'll, I'll draw it in a sec. And um, so you put your hand on his head like that, on his, on his back, sorry. You go down behind his head, and it's like a, a vein, sort of like an area that joins, membrane joins up behind his head to the body. And just push it up under the, the uh, helmet, only about probably that far in at the most. And you'll see him just go from beautiful colours to just white. And you know you've done the job right. That's the case, okay? So just push it down. So I'll quickly draw it. Um, but supposedly it, it makes the it makes the flesh a lot better. So you don't like I just seen here what the clues were that the keeper mm. the keeper net not the squid. Can't talk about that in a minute. Yet. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That That's right. <laughs> so it's like a membrane here. His head sort of is here. It's his eyes there. And, Obviously, his tentacles are here. Um, so, and these 
That, this, this is like the cow nose with all the nice lines on it. All those lines are there, and that's his eyes there. So you just push it down in here, down in there, like so, and just go up like that as you're doing it. And you'll just see all these lines disappear and just get beautiful white. And that's the job done and he's out of his misery and put him on ice anyhow. Or you just put him in a bucket of the ice or Esker's ice or whatever you got. This time of year it's pretty cold anyhow. It's up to you guys. Um, I find as well, if you just mm. hold and give him a karate chop behind the head. Yeah, so that's a, I was about to say that too. So the karate chop is quite a popular method. You can do it with the whack like that or put it down there and do karate chop like that. Make sure you don't have soft hands. Um, and don't, don't flat thing, but yeah, that does work, it does work. And actually, if you jump online, I think, Karate Chop Squid or something's called, you'll see how they do it, okay? Yeah. You'll see how they do that online too, by the way. You know that? Um, okay, so that's the tool. So if you haven't got, if we normally sell them, but the Japanese, again, they're quite expensive, around 20 bucks, 25 bucks. But if you just get a screwdriver, just take out about, fold about two mil out of the sand, get two little prongs on it, that's all you need. Flat screw of about sort of five mil across the top, or six mil. Okay, I do. I have made. This is my latest invention. Um, this is just a um, a little hook out gun that we use on on sabikis like yakas and slimies and that. If you get them off the off the uh, bait jig, great little tool. Just flip them off uh, into the bait tank. But um, I just straighten that out and just sharpen that up. And I just use a single one actually. It still works all right. Um, Cut that off. I just actually pinch it out, but you can cut that off. That works alright too. Um, but screwed off would be the best. Um, the, okay, last tool, the bag. Okay, it's a pain in the backside cleaning squid, as you all know, especially in the kitchen sink. If you've got a white sink, it goes black, and, and most of the ladies don't like it, and I don't like it. <laughs> so, um, so the best thing to do, if especially the boat, um, is the the keeper bag, so you put the squid in there, you you need to make it up, okay guys, so you put the squid on there, um, on the front of it you put like a um, big float, that would be a, like a crab pot float or whatever, not not real big, sort of 100 mil across, uh, make sure you're using about probably 6 mil rope, so it's fairly strong, or 4 mil rope, put that um, just above it, right, right near it, and then you run your rope about probably 6 metres long, 8 metres long, drop that at the back of the boat, Get up to around about um, sort of 15 knots, so it's just on the first wave behind the boat, and it just tumbles around and goes all over the joint, and it'll pull and then it'll pop out of the air and do somersaults. Go for about a kilometre or two kilometres, and it'll be it'll be completely clean pretty well. The, it, the ink's all gone, um, the sack's all dispersed, the eyes are generally going to the head, it's just like clean squid sort of thing. Okay, Has anyone tried that yet? No, no, serious. Okay. I've seen it, but I haven't. Yeah, no, it's very good. The, the proper bags, which we have downstairs, which are like 50 or 60, 80 dollars, they got rings inside. You can sew rings into those too. But I just, years ago, I just used those. I've got a proper one now, but they work all right. Yeah, but same it's just easy. Eh? Same thing for whiting, and garfish is really good too. So if you want to scale a fish, same deal. You just put a float on it, say. Do you have to pull the head off first? No, no, just leave it all intact. Yeah. You can if you want to. Um, and it's pretty well skins it as well too. Yeah, we can say that as well. Yeah, but when you're cleaning your squid, which is the next thing, um, just what, all you do is actually use your, just your thumb or your finger, and there's a membrane between the two little flaps and the body. Just peel it down there, both sides, and it just peels off. We just do one side actually, just unwrap the whole lot off, comes off. Um, take the head out. This is if you don't do the bag thing, <laughs> and the goose are hanging behind it, which is the part that you stabbed earlier, and um, just. Pull that off. I actually pull it off because it's quite gooey, but pull it off because the little bits of white meat around are really nice to eat. Um, take the, I'll cut the eye section out so you can actually cut that head in, into two pieces or three pieces. So the eye section is quite a hard membrane, so that's gone. Um, and the mouth area is quite a hard area, so that's part of that, so that's gone too. Um, the two long candle uh, squid uh, tentacles. They're the ones that they did. They're supposed to they carry like um, uh, some sort of germ in it. So you'll see a lot of on squid shows they cut those off. I cut them off as well. So just the two long ones. The little ones are okay, but the, the two long ones just cut off the part with the, the sucker suction caps on it. Keep the rest of it though, okay? So you might cut off on things that long. You might cut off just that much of it and uh, and cook the rest up. Um, that's the best part. Yeah, especially 
um, like we've tried. Okay, any questions on that so far? Okay, so we've got all the gear, we've got all the go, all the lures, and how to do it. Just got to know where to go now and, and how to do it when you go there. So I might put this up on here on the screen. Just wait for Liam to do that. So you've got a map in your bags, guys, if you don't mind grabbing it out, please. Just before I go any further, how many people have, have squid up Morden Bay? Okay, and it's like that's the that's the home run. Unfortunately, at the Gold Coast, our squidding's actually got better over the years. Um, we never used to get any arrow squid in the Gold Coast at all, and I've been here a long time. Um, and I've tried for them for a long time. But uh, I've caught the odd ones over the years, but never, and I caught the odd ones around jumping pin, but I've never caught um, the numbers like we get the last few years, two or three years. Um, the area around um, sort of Maclay to Emily Point or Morton is like the honey hole for squid for Queensland or South East Queensland in particular. Um, I didn't do any maps in that area, but if you want to go up there and have a squid, do a squid session, like you'll go up and get 40 or 60 squid in a session. And the, the mix of calamari and, and the other one, the arrow squid. And um, the go is generally um, sort of, if you, if you know a place called My Aura, where My Aura Springs is, and out the front of that, there is a green zone there, but you can stick just outside the green zone, and all the way along the edge down to the entrance into Darnage Harbour, um, North Australia. And there's a big so got sort of 2k area there, edge, and uh, that's all the way along there's this like Squid City. And then just in the entrance of the harbour, is a couple of beacons you go in, heading up to Little Ships Club before, the, before all the boats start, and just in that little channel there is really good as well. You we pull 10 or 15 out of there. And then on the banks opposite um, that, from Mora down to Dunwich, on the opposite bank is really good as well. And then if you get a chance to get out further towards um, Emily Point across to, um, uh, what's the part, the bottom part of um, Red Cream, that's it, yeah, yeah that area, bottom end of Morton. Um, all those banks in between there are fantastic. So it's really so close to the ocean. Peel South? Uh, Peel South, so um, I've caught them obviously all around Peel, but um, it's too deep between there and sort of Maclay, but you get them around Maclay and some of the rocky areas and, and uh, some of the bays there. Um, but you've, to get them around the banks, you've got to go all the way up to sort of at least uh, Dunwich. Was it Dunwich there? Or north, west side, of, east side of Peel, sorry. Yeah. That's right. We came from Blakesley for three weeks. So oh, okay. Well, yeah, fantastic. It's only. 10 minutes up the, yeah. up the road, mate, yeah. I'll show you the map, yeah. <laughs> yeah, good, yeah, good. Yeah, good. But these maps here, okay, so, um, these are all the areas that I really um, like to hit hard. Um, and this is um, both, there's both calamari squid and arrow squid here, so I'll start with this map here, which is your left side of the page. So, um, does, Everybody know, actually, no, sorry, I started this one here, so right side of the page, my apologies, more than, more than, more than that. Thanks, Liam. So, um, where are we? Just there. <coughs> sorry, I get my head around the map. Okay, so that's there for an island there, up the top of the map, near that little camera. Mm -hmm. the map. So, oops, nice. So, we've, um, we've done really well. Even this is uh, for the gentleman because at night time, this is probably my best night time spot, uh, which is uh, straight out from Efren Island. Um, there's a green and red up here, and then you go between Efren and Sovereign. From there, all the way down to um, pretty well down to the yellow actually, just drifting down the centre there. Um, how that happened was I'd never tried up there before last year, um, and I always get from the marina here. And I had some mates of mine, Tommy and Hayden, and they saw us catching heaps on a YouTube or whatever. And they wanted me to take them out and show them how to do it. And I thought, oh, that would give them a really good spot. So <laughs> I said, guys, pick me up at the marina, which is here. And I said, I'll take that to where we get really lots. And it was like about four in the morning, it was really early, because I'd start work at eight o'clock, so I said, we're gonna go early. So it was pitch black, it was around this time of year. So I said, oh, this is the spot up here, mate. So we zoomed up here and we drifted out and I thought, I'll oh, just wait till it gets near daylight. Then I said, oh, let's try here on the way back. At least we get something at last sort of hour. 
And then I'm just mucking around and the, both of them pulled in squid. I'm going, holy crap. And so we ended up nailing about a dozen there, like in, in the first hour. So it was just uh, like amazing. And we lost heaps as well. And a really big arrow squid as well. Through the channel. Yeah, just through the channel between the red and yeah. green, drifting down, particularly on the more halfway across the green side. Just go up there and look at the big red patch. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, so that's a really good spot, but it still works well. Um, the other area is down at the marina. There's a red beacon in front of the marina, okay, and there's a green across here, there's a yellow marker, there's another green marker down here, something. Um, all the way from that red marker in front of the marina, all the way down past that little inlet, Howard Street boat ramps here, all the way down to near Shearwater Canal entrance. <coughs> um, that's probably as good as the spot up further, we're going to talk a bit later, but it's probably the number one area. Is this over here? Close to it. Yeah, close to it there. Yeah. Yeah. Probably yeah. better there in the last couple of weeks. You have? Yeah. yeah. Thanks to your uh, ideas. Oh, thanks. <laughs> <laughs> good. Um, the other area we've done really well, um, particularly last year, was um, over here. So you all know where Little Crab Island is. Um, over here, there's some green beacons. There's three, I think, three green boys in a row there in front of Karaji Camping Ground, South Karaji. The red. Uh, the greens. There's two reds over here, then there's two or three green boys there as well. The channel's actually in between, obviously. Um, and um, closer to the green than the red, although we have pulled around the red side too. But from there, depending on the running tide, the run out tide, but all the way up to the red up here, which is obviously near that jetty that's on uh, South Australia there. Uh, again, you're in about six or seven metres of water there, it's quite mm -hmm. deep. So if, I'm, if the tide's going out, this going this way. Um, I've got my, my set lines just sitting there, maybe cast them out eight or nine metres. They'll hit the bottom, they won't do anything on the, on the rod hole, they'll just be a slack line, but as soon as the boat starts drifting, the line will start pulling, and I'll be able to angle like that. If it's like that, I'll definitely pull them in and put a little sinker on or something, and to get them on that angle like that. I know they're not quite on the bottom, or they might be on the bottom. You get a lot of mid-water weed, and snot weed and that they're floating through there so you need to actually take that off your cheek and check it every sort of five minutes or ten minutes and just throw it back out again um, but your other rod you're casting up into the currents when getting it so if i'm drifting that way i'm casting that way and i'm just slowly moving it back towards me okay and you'll see in the video how we do it so we cast up just leave the show in a minute and we sort of work it and work our way down um, i'll do one drift that, maybe that side and one drift in the middle or maybe a little bit over that side but generally I'll do two drifts in an area and I, and I sort of spread it about casting distance so it might be 40 metres wide each time I do the next drift so I can cast 40 metres right so if I'm not getting them I'll just move over a bit more than I can cast another 40 metres that way um, until I find where they really are if they're not happening then I'm out of there in that two drifts getting back to our time period before yeah that, could you do that at night as well, that same area? I have caught in there at night time. Remember last year at the end, we did really well. Yeah. 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 Sunday, okay, well, <laughs> straight out the front there. <laughs> if they're there, that's where they are. Yeah. Yeah, and that's where as well. Six, six or seven yeah. metres? Ah, it's or about six or seven metres, yeah, that's right. So, right in the guts of the channel again? Yep. Yeah. Yep. Do you have little weed beds or anything, Dougie? You just no, there, there are weed beds in, on the bottom everywhere, actually, even in the channels. Yeah. Um, but they're one of the only things I, 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 I know the calamari squid backwards, which we'll talk about a bit later. But, but these things just seem to live in the channel on the sand, they're happy with nothing like a so desert. Yeah, well, they must be scared of fish. I don't know where they run to, they must be fast. Because, yeah. like, you just think everything, if you just look at them, it's like like prey out in the middle of the street, you know? Yeah. Doggy? Yeah. Do they like more, like more murky water? Or oh, no. They don't like murky water at all. So once that water starts to give it a run, then it starts to change to dirty. So get back to the tide, sorry guys. Really important the fish, um, the last hour the run in, the top, first two hours the run out. After about two hours, it'll get dirty. It's a good time to fish actually, but it's not the right time for squid. Okay. Yeah, unless you can find a spot where the water's clear. But at that stage, what I'll be doing, which we do, is um, if I've got the time as well, um, I know um, I'll go chase the green, the tiger squid, green eye squid, at that stage, because they'll they'll slide into eddies, what we call eddies, around walls or around sandbanks, and there's a bit of weed. 
and that's when you go chase the calamari squid then. So if you're, if you're chasing them, say like the brim, if you've, if you've found courage, would you shoot for the grand while you've still got clean water? 100%. You know, like yeah, 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 to... yeah. We do that all the time. We do yeah, five spots in yeah, one yeah. session, yeah. Yeah, as the tide yeah. moves, you move. Yeah. And same for the gentleman land base. Um, for you, um, we'll come down to that in a minute, but you want to be at the, say, the Grand Hotel. It'll be high tide there before up further. Yeah. So you hit there first, and then you've, it'll be another 40 minutes later up at the pool, and then burn up there, or half hour later up there. Yeah. Very cool beers into the sheet, man. <laughs> well, that's true. <laughs> um, so, anyhow, we, so we're down, we've done Renault Bay, we've done there, there. Um, next area is, um, which um, we've done really well here too. I've got to, you know, like we sort of stop at 20 squid. I swear squid's a lot of squid. And um, we've had a few sessions at 20 here this last couple of months or month. So where Baby Harbour is, um, the big is up on Baby Harbour. Um, I get them on both that side and over on the boat side over here and through the middle, of course. Uh, from there down to about the, the end of the wall, the creek area here. I should have left a gap there. I haven't put much in front of the creek for some reason, don't know why. Uh, but then there's another, uh, I think it's a, uh, a red beacon here in front of the creek, in front of where they're doing the pipe across. And from there, yeah, out in the middle channel, uh, down to where way, you get to the way break here. So all the way through there uh, is really good too. It's just that gap in the middle there, you don't seem to get them, but you get them there and you get them there. Um, Twenty. Sorry. Twenty squid bag limit. Twenty tigers. Twenty, 20 tigers. I don't know about arrows. I, arrows I, I can't like find anything on it at the moment, so I think yeah, I think there's, there's, there's no bag limit. But like twenty is enough anyhow. Oh, I reckon. Yeah. <laughs> and it's we we lost squid. Trust off. me. I think it is twenty for the arrows. As well. yeah, yeah, it might be right. Yeah, it's a good thing. Um, and then uh, the next area from there down, which is getting into, I'll make them back here is um, the Grand Area. The Grand Area has been really good for uh, drifting as well and land base. So anywhere from Charis where the, uh, on the north side of the swimming area, like the, imagine you're straight in front of that, which is near where the traffic lights are actually at Brisbane Road here. From there all the way down to about um, Aqua Building, so even through the boats there. But most of this squid, um, if in the boat, send a, tend, seem to be right in front of the boat ramp. Just yeah, just past the six knot zone, zone sign, uh, down to about the Grand Hotel jetty, which is near the boat ramp. That's the really good area, and there's yellow boys there. So fish are in those yellow boys in the middle of the channel. Uh, there, same tide, run out tides, quite good. First couple of hours, and I've caught them down to in between the two beacons here, heading down that channel on the. Uh, South side of Waybreak, uh, I've put them down to about halfway between that green and that green in the middle of the channel as well. So you get down there as well. So if you're land based, uh, this is one of the best spots on the on the coast. So you've got um, the jetty at the boat ramp, which is really good. So the gentleman got them last night, he's telling me. And I've got lots there too. Um, you fish the whole wall, because there's weed at the front here all the way to uh, the, the next jetty, which is the fishing jetty, public jetty there. Um, and I caught them around the corner where the little uh, platform is, that wood platform on the bend as you walk up the straight, you know, on this boardwalk here, um, on that corner. And I caught them off the rock wall all the way along. And one really good spot's in front of Aqua, that, near where the jetty is there. And the little pipe comes out here, uh, just on the north side of Aqua, or south side of Aqua. That pipe's really good, mate. Just stand, there's a fence there that's a pain in the ass, but <laughs> sort of cast around the fence. Um, and you pull some really big um, calamari, the tide is good out of there. High tide, though. Okay. Um, so you all know that area. And then we go over here. Um, so that's that area there we're talking about. Thanks, Sue. That area there. Oh, is that it? No, that's already done that. Um, that area there, sorry. I'll come back to that last. Um, Still going on the arrow squid now and, and calamari. So the whole of the sea world. I haven't got anything there this year yet, but I think I've seen um Clint off um Gold Coast Mission Charters getting a few off there. Who um Estrum Charters. Um which is there, it's the back of Sea World. There's a hole there if you don't know it's about eight or nine metres deep, it's quite deep. And sometimes they're in there and they're on the edge of the channel near the, the red markers on that side. Um, 
and then all the way on the edge of the channel. It's not so much the centre here, but it's near the edge where it drops off and sort of three to six metres, which is the general slope on the edge of the channel here. Both sides, all the way down, all the way, all the way. It's a big area to work, but that's where it's happening. Okay? Um, and then this area here, that's um, the parklands at the back of, uh, sort of Smith Street. And we've got the pool there, and that's Southport Pier. Looking back to the gentleman down there as well. And for us, as we're going to go off the jetty, it's a really good area to fish off the jetty. But the, have you fished there at all, mate? Uh, no, no. Yet. There's a little, uh, there's a, uh, like a pontoon down off the jetty, if that makes sense, halfway along it. Yeah. Um, and that's really good fishing around there as well. And you can cast around there. But at the end of the jetty, so probably another 30 metres out from that, at, at walk back to the end. You can see the, a green buoy out in front of the jetty. That's for the guys, guys in the boats um, start around the green buoy. Generally, you drift this time, it's going to be southwest or northwest, depending on the tide and depending on the current. Uh, sorry, the wind. Um, but start just out from the jetty and either drift that way or you drift that way. So, when you're land based, do you just sort of flick it out and leave it, or do you do a No, you're working the whole time, mate. Yeah. You're hopping it the whole time. You can do like. Calamari squid don't like the hop as much. They like just a, a, a slow wine, but uh, most of the most of the time you get those is when you cast out and then you wipe your face over and you click your bar across and start the wind it. You think I'm stuck on the bottom and start pulling. They've already grabbed it on the fall. Um, so what I do then is I can think, well, how, how am I going to emulate that all the way back in? So I'll do a bit of a wind, slow wind, and then I'll do a really big lift up of the rod so it comes right up maybe three metres up or two metres up, then I let it fall again and then just wait and then take it up a little bit and next minute they'll be on there. Yeah. yeah. Some, but sometimes those big ones they'll lash out while you, you're feeling hit or you're wanting in. That's why braid is really important, to feel the hit. If you feel the hit straight away, just open the bale arm up, you miss it. Straight open the bale, let it fall and they'll grab it. If you see uh, daytime, actually wearing Polaroid glasses when you're squid fishing is really important. Could be eyes too, but, but you'll see um, you'll see a shadow coming. Nighttime too, but you'll see a clear like a white shadow. Daytime they're quite dark normally, and um, you'll see the shadow. If you see it following, just so straight away. Always open the bale up of your reel and let it fall. It's the first instinct you should do straight away. Don't look directly at it either. Don't look at it. Look off to the side. Yeah, right. Okay, I haven't tried that. Off to the side. You've got good vision, eh? Incredible vision. Yeah. yeah. Maybe. No, I mean, but you're trying to see anything behind you in those low light hours. Oh, okay, so you're saying. You're looking at the light hours, but if you're staring yeah. straight up somewhere, it's hard to see if you look yeah. off to the side. Yeah. Yeah, yeah see it more better, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah true. Um, but yeah, so just uh, throw open the bar alarm up, let hit the bottom, wait up just five seconds, take up the slack, and then you take it up, you go to lift, and if they pull, it's not the bottom, it's the squid on there. At that point, I'll just drive those jigs in a bit more and then I'll I'll play them in. Don't just don't just start winding it slowly because sometimes I might grab it but I can maybe let go. I don't know how squid get off squid jigs. I think they have a squid jig, imagine that it's very hard to get off here. It's very hard. But it's in the off. Um, getting back to here. So um, we've put them right up to the Gold Coast Bridge. It's the Gold Coast Bridge there. Um, you will get them off the piers at, on both sides of the squid of the jetty there, mate, if you land base. And under the jetty, under the bridge, sorry. Um, that little platform there, I haven't put arrows in front of that, so I didn't put a mark there, but they may be there, but I haven't put them there. Um, just as that goes around, there's a big circus there at the moment. It's quite deep along this edge on the shore side of the sign, so you're not in the channel, you're actually on the other side of it. So it's around about six metres deep five metres deep, and that's the perfect depth. So all three there, I've put them through there as well. I haven't done much in the channel there, so I can't really say much on the channel side. Um, that's probably about it there. Um, you will get squid further up the river as well. I'll be around, like, I've caught them as far up as sort of Tiki Village at, in surface, around the jetties there at night time. Big ones too, by the way. Um, you get them all year round too. They seem to be residential ones. Mm -hmm. They seem to take, take, take a place there and live there until you catch them. Or they get eaten by something. Um, okay, getting back, Lee, just drop that down a bit more. Yeah. Okay, the seaway. So this is now calamari squid, okay? The bigger ones. So the bigger ones, 
uh, back away brake. That's the first, uh, the first lagoon in here where the houseboats are in, on the northern end of the back away brake there. Uh, it's a bit tricky getting there. You've got a little tinny that's burning in there anytime. But if you've got a bit bigger boat, five metres or whatever, you might hit the bottom there, so just be careful getting in there. Um, once you're inside, um, you, generally the wind's far from the south, so you start on the edge there where the sand comes up and it starts to drop down and cast back with the wind, obviously, until you get it drift right across to the other side, it starts to get shallow again. There's weed all the way through there. There's other bit of sand patches in between. Um, you will get some squid off the, off the houseboats, but don't throw your squid jigs under the houseboats because they go mad at you, which would <coughs> happen with kids. <laughs> Not you, <me. laughs> Um The weed beds at the back here, caught them there. The next one in, caught them there. And there's another one in here. It's a bit shallow, but caught them there as well. Um, there's good clumps of weed at the back here on the high tide. As the tide drops, they tend to slide off wherever they're feeding at here in on these clumps um, and you can land base catch them off there so if you want to park your boat anywhere in that little lagoon right at the, at the southern end where everyone sits there and drinks and has the loud music going just park your boat there walk over to those clumps there and cast out at the low tide it's really good and use a little squid jig 2.5 okay um caught them out in that, in that little hole um the, the whole south wall of um of way breaks really good from where the tree is at the most western part of it, all the way along. They're not there all the time, but they are there. When, when they come in, they're there, okay? And they'll be all the way along here. Um, I will cast right to the edge of the rocks, and other times I'll, if I can't get on the edge of the rocks, I'll do one more drift, I'll go stay a little bit further, and I'll cast, face them back this way, and bring it back, like hopping it back with the current towards me, and I'm drifting that way. So I'm maybe in about, two and a half metres of water, I guess. A bit deeper. But sometimes it's sitting down in the depth. Um, then, it's only everything here, guys. I've really dropped my pants here, let me tell you. But where the wall is on the end here, where the wall is here, um, on the run out tide, you'll get an eddy right on that corner there. It's like just a dull patch there. Liam's going to definitely tell them everything. But if you sit there and you cast See, so he's sitting on the north side of the end of the wall, casting back up to the south side of the wall, south end of the, of the wall at the end. So that's the wall at the end there, and the current's coming, hooking around from the, from the Grand Hotel, and it comes around like that, and there's a beacon up front of you, right? It goes out towards the seaway. Um, so we sit about here, and we cast back up to the edge of this eddy, which is here, where it rips out, and it's, it's, there's nothing there, it's just like an eddy. And they sit in that eddy waiting for whatever comes past and they just grab it, I think. And um, I've had some really big sessions there, like 20, about to come up, the big ones. Because <laughs> um, one of my best spots. Um, and the other side over here, both sides of the wall again. Um, we drift along that side of the wall on the, on the north side of it. Uh, from on the, It's always really weird there, whether the tide's running in or out, it's always, it's always uh, east, a uh, west to east drift there. So if the tide's ripping in, you actually it's coming back out though that, along the walls. Does that make sense? Yeah. With a back eddy. So it's a big back eddy, mm -hmm. and squid love back eddies. It's one of their favourites. So you'll even the tide's coming in there. You start up here, you drift along, heading to, out towards the seaway on the edge of the wall, and that's a really good area too. Same thing again. I'll, I'll cast right up on the edge. Sometimes it's sitting right amongst the rocks, right on the edge. You can't see, of course. Um, but as soon as, it, as soon as it hits the water, sometimes I'll attack it straight away, or sometimes you'll just go to one and up and they're on it. If they're not on the edge of the wall, then I'll do my next drift out about probably six to eight metres off the wall, and I'll just drift and I'll work up current in the deep and slowly moving it. Okay? And is that <coughs> tide dependent? Uh, it's, for there, it's always the same way out. So, no, I mean, like, uh, the uh, clear water. Yeah, clear water, that's right. Yeah, so, Probably, but once it starts really hooking out, then it's really too fast there. Yeah. So yeah, high tide, uh, first hour of the run, last hour of the run out, first hour of the run, last hour of the run in, first hour of the run out. <laughs> yeah. So that's sort of two hour, three hour window. Yeah. Once it starts hooking, out, particularly at night time, I've had some really, that's good, that's where I used to float that night. On the inside of the, I think, where they all dive there, where the people dive there. So that's a really good place at night time. So, same deal, the tide comes hooking around here, 
They said that Eddie in there and they feed. Um, I remember one time there, I caught a lot, another time there, I caught a lot too. Um, I was actually casting, they were that thick, they were, they were, I was casting up onto the sand and winding out from the sand. Like something with two big cast, I was excited. <laughs> and, um, and straight away I'm on. And there must have been a lot of water this deep. They must have just been feeding. There's a lot of bait around too. So the, the beach on the corner? Yeah, on the, the corner, yeah. Yeah, on, yeah. All that lagoon on the back? No, on the front. Oh, I'm sorry. On where the wall is there, that's the wall, that black thing? Yeah. Um, in that corner, right there. Corner right there. So you're on the south side of the north wall? Yeah. Okay. Yep. Are the tiger squid more predominant at night time? They, they're easy to catch at night time, eh? That's 100%. Um, uh, but I have some, have some big catches during the day too, particularly on that wall there and on that edge. Um, and at the back here. I've done probably better during the day there. I haven't caught many there at night time. So I find in the deeper water where the, where the weed is, is really hard during the night. But structure that's easy during the night. New structure. Rock walls, jetties. Um, I've caught them over at um, SeaWorld here. I've put a mark there. Um, on the jetties there at SeaWorld as well, but there's normally boats there, it's a bit hard to get in there, like, yeah, I tried there about a week or so ago, and the, the big uh, whale boat was tied up to the jetty at the SeaWorld Nara there, so I couldn't even get near it. So the small arrow squid, mm. are they, are they... 100% more daytime than nighttime. Yeah, more daytime? 100%, yep. I don't know what that is. I, I've caught them at nighttime, but we haven't caught many at nighttime. Like, maybe, well, that night I went up to, here at Ephraim was the best night I've ever had. We got sort of 12 or 15 or something in the dark. Uh, but generally we might get six or eight. Uh, but um, daytime I'll get whatever, yeah, 20 or something. Um, I did try at night time, one thing I tried too, folks, is the green squid lights. Are you going to try those at all at night time? Um, I was just about to mention Norton Bay. Remember, we just actually pulled up for our fisheries for a check and we had squid coming up to the green light on the side of the boat and just oh, right. just give me a second, drop a jig down, pull the squid up, <laughs> get back to the conversation. Yeah, yeah. And then, yeah, we pull like three or four off and yeah, right. just come and straight yeah. up to it. Yeah. I have since bought one of those uh, yep. underwater lights yep. and haven't really used the trophy. It's, it tracks a hell of a lot of lifetime. It does, but, yeah. Um, mm. Yeah. yeah. So we stopping the light from small fish, but yeah. I don't see why they've avoided it. Yeah, we sell, we've got them downstairs now. They're a 360 degree green light, like a LED light thing, about that long. And they're weighted and they've got about, I don't know, eight, six, eight metres of cord, cord on them. And um, we took it to your battery, the terminals. And I just um, drop it over the side, maybe from water level to maybe half a metre under. So it's just below my boat, sort of thing. And as you said, the green thing's is half the size of this room, it's quite big. Um, and you'll see heaps of life, like little. Like little wriggle worms and heaps of hardy heads and, and pike and then garfish. Garfish are crazy, they don't jump in the boat, they go, they seem to try to attack the light. Um, and then you'll see three squid come along <laughs> and lots of little tiny squid. You can actually reach over and grab, I grab one the other night in my hand. You know? um, so they seem to be very attracted to it. I haven't had a big session off it yet though, so I'm waiting for that day. Yeah. yeah. But as I said, the water's a bit warm yet, so might be to do with that. But uh, land base and boat base. So the walls of the seaway um, had some really big sessions there all along the calamaris, it's not, not arrow squid, it's calamari squid. So if, you, if you're land base, um, where the road down here goes is that way and you've got to go left or right. From that corner there's a, there's a sign there. Just walking the whole foreshore, the rocks, all the way down to the dive platform at the pipe, all the way along. We've even caught it from the tower actually. Um, and particularly high tide and the first to run out. It's getting a little bit later now, but you still will get them, but you want that high tide to be right on daylight or right on dark. And you get there like an hour before that, and you, you work it, and then you'll, once the tide starts to run out, you keep working for another hour or so, then this gets too strong. You see where it just rips. Um, but from the boat, and we've caught them also along here, and I've had some really big sessions between the pipe and the tower. Fishing, it's quite deep there, but along that edge, it's really good. Um, over on the north wall here, um, look, I haven't caught any at the end. It looks so good sometimes. You get no swell, and it's just like beautiful. You think it's got to be squid there, especially on the stratty side. I haven't got any there yet. Oops. 
this did time wasn't going to show up to spot that link. <laughs> um, but uh, just over here where the inlet is, the Ilgo inlet is opposite the North Waller Way break, the inlet where they park their boats in there. That's a really good area. Eddies on both sides there being the, on the tide. And that's, of course, a really good squid in that eddy there. But I put them all the way along here as well. Um, but this, that area is really good as well. That little inlet is. Um, and that's probably about the best squidding area areas on the Gold Coast. So any questions on that at all? Yeah, I've got one. Yes, you know how you said before you don't use your electric on the mm. if, uh, you're, yeah, if you're fishing yeah. near, the, near the walls yep. and there's a little bit of current, do you switch your engine on? hundred percent. So different scenario there. So you can cast, hold yourself to the current, cast up the current, get a long cast, and then just work it back, mate. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. So in that case, take back what I said. Yeah, it's good. Yeah. Um, and same in some of these areas here. If, if you, I don't know if they, if they group up. I think they do, because sometimes if you get one quite often, especially arrow squid, you'll see another one following him. When you do, just cast your line straight out, because you'll get the second one straight away. Um, just let it free fall, and they'll grab it. Um, so maybe they do, do school up, but... I still find um, we get more drifting though. Yeah. yeah. It was really windy and you're drifting too fast. Then maybe just slow your, slow your speed right down. So you just do a real slow drift, but you're working against it the whole time. Yeah. yeah. You just got to watch out your squid doesn't overtake it with your cheek, you know? Yeah. yeah your, your propeller, sorry. Yeah. Um, yeah. And the other places I, I haven't tried this year and I want to try, and I have caught big squid. Um, when I'm offshore, I, I'm, I caught on bait jigs, I caught them when I'm boat lining too, by the way, out of just the 18 and the 12 fathom reefs and stuff like that. So um, this year, my, my whole idea, especially the last few weeks, was to get out there trying some footage for tonight. And I was also going to try uh, the bags at, so I know they'll be there, the bags at, um, at Naranek. They've got to be there. And maybe the artificial reef off... Um, of Australia, where you get the trees on the on the blocks, they'll be there too. Um, but I haven't had a chance because the weather's been too cruddy to get out and do that. So, um, but I'll, I will do it over the next few weeks, and and you'll see. Obviously, on Facebook, it'll be really good. Are there any spots up around the Yeah, there are. So, I haven't got it here, but um, the only area I've caught them, and that's by mistake on flat fish, and I've actually they've got to be thick because they're on my soft plastic with the jig head. Which is pretty hard to squid up, I do think. It's not a treble, it's just a one hook. So, um, the area I've caught quite a few over the last few years, I want to, now that I sort of dialed in the arrows, I want to get there and give it a shot, which we're going to do on Sunday. We'll be up there. So, it's between where the channel, not this tip of the channel, but where the main channel, you come from here up to Jumping Pin. You either go left to Jacob's Well or right to Millionaire's Road. Uh, just as you go right, you've got that big bank you go around with the shelves on it, there's all these pelicans on it. Um, there's a there's a little drain comes out there, and it's more or less opposite <coughs> the red. Yeah. There's a red there. A little drain comes out of it, and um, I, I fish a lot for flatties along that area there. From there, all the way down to the next black, which goes up the tipplers. Mm -hmm. So all of that middle of that channel is about 24 foot deep there, 23 foot deep. It's quite deep, um, and it's a bit shelly bottom. I think they like shelly bottom too. That's something too, by the way. Um, but definitely, uh, I'm going to give that a shot. Yeah. So we're not going to go flathead fishing, we're going to go squid fishing. Yeah. <laughs> there, which will, I'll, I'll let you guys know on that one too. Yeah. Um, we'll quickly watch a couple of videos just on, on the technique. You might, everyone's probably seen this, but sorry if it bores you, but <laughs> um, I'll just sort of explain what happened. But I'll get Lee to stop it and I'll talk to you about what I'm talking about at the same time. That's that little inlet I'm telling you about there. So when the tide's running out, it comes in here. Oops. Sorry. It's all right comes in there and it does an eddy. comes in here and it does an eddy here. And you cast this area here. There's a tree actually just through the corner. Just in that area, right up against the edge of the rocks there. They sit right up high. And I think they shoot out and grab a, a, the bait that goes past. So I'm going to play that, Lee, and we'll just see how it goes, mate. So just using a natural, one of those Sephir jigs, the um, Shimano one that went around. This is in the kids' little tinny. So my tinny, I'd done my motor at the time, and Liam didn't have his bigger tinny, so we used the little, little tinny. <laughs> so it was quite awkward. But I used to squid out of, out of my 680 Hanes, and it was fine. I got lots of squid out of that. Didn't like cleaning up on the outside, but 
Well, screw that too. So they can't be too big. You get them off big boats at night time, you know. Um, but little boat is fine too. So I'm fishing for calamari squid. So I'm not doing much of the hopping like I was telling you, right? And I said there's a big lift up. So I'm um, just slow winding. What would the tie be doing? Uh, tie there's running high, I think. Pretty or high. And is there anything around the corner where they, where the ebb, where the... Yeah, where the bubbles are? Yeah. Um, I, I think I've caught a few there in the deep side of it, Brian, but never up around the bubble part, no. Okay. No. So, if they're not sitting in here, as I said, the second drift, or, or no matter where I am, I, I do the ledge, I do the edge and I'll cast a horizontal to it and, and bring it back with the current. <coughs> so wherever there's bait, you know there's always bait around trees, right? That's where they are. They're always around the bait. No. Oh, I don't know. I, I see things on the sound, but I don't know if it's them. I don't know, you mate. I've been to ask you that same yeah, yeah. question because no. we've noticed that, yeah, I've got the two or five garden sharks. I'll do that. Blue lines. Ah, right, okay. Blank, you know, yeah, right. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Okay. Just off the bottom, like, no, that's where we get the they don't show a hard return, it's not like a, what the fish is just like a, probably more garden color palette, it's just a blue ball like, yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm convinced that's what they are. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I haven't worked that one out yet, sorry. Uh, Brian has asked how It's all just weed on my sand, dude. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, they hang around the weed. <laughs> Um, Brian has asked how to keep them alive, better keep them alive for bait, I guess, or keep them fresh. Yeah. Um, you just need a live well with plenty of air. They, they do die quite quick, right. but if you've got plenty of air going, that they're okay. If you leave them running, yep. they're good. So you get good, yep. good, good fresh live yep. bait. Yep. Cool. yep, yep, yep. Sorry. Um, I'm back again, central hot wall here. Just going to go. Uh, so here's the north wall of Waybreak now. So I'm casting to the edge first, trying to work along this edge, and yeah, maybe a bit right. later I'll do a, a later one. So another thing I'm doing there is I'm leaving the bar arm open while it sinks. I'd never ever cast it and close the bar straight away, because that pulls the lure as it's going down away from where you want it to sit. But if you leave it open, it falls right where you want it to sit. So try not to close your bar arm up. So I've pulled it a little bit and it's come up a bit too, I believe, a bit too high up. So I've let it free fall again. <coughs> Until and you watch your braid, it's all you're fishing, if you get lure fish, you should always watch your braid. And when it, obviously it floats on the top and it stops, it's hit the bottom, okay? So now I'm actually casting, I think, down along the edge there. Because I didn't get any on the first drift. Oh, there you go. I didn't get any on the first drift on the edge, so they, they're over the edge. They're, sometimes they don't want to be in the shallow, they don't want to be in the deep. <coughs> so you've got to work out at that time where they are. So you're just casting parallel and then up the Yeah, that's right, correct, mate. And, and hop in the back of the current. So that's the seaway in the background? That's the seaway in the background. That's the whole North Wall Way Break Island. Yeah. So a lot of the time they it's hooked up with that tentacle, and if you've got a big one on, they'll snap off. So these are the green eye calamari tiger squid, whatever you call them. Is there a name for those? Have you got a proper name for those things? Yes? Northern calamari, are they? Okay, I'll call them that. <laughs> that sounds better. Do you ever get a bycatch of um, cuttlefish? I have, yeah, we've got a couple of sheets in there. Yeah, we have, but they're only small, mate. 
Oh, they're too cute. Like, oh, yeah. I killed one once. I didn't <laughs> like it. Eh? So I, I let them go. <laughs> but I see the guys on uh, on um, Facebook have like, oh, right, I'll cut off cuddle this thing. I don't know. I let them go. How do you find the heads go for bait? I'd eat the heads. <laughs> I was trying to catch you. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, I just buy the frozen stuff downstairs. Yeah. So, squirting. Okay, that's the reason why I did this one. As we talked about before, they have very good vision and they will aim for you. I've got shots of my kids. Every one of my kids has been totally in the head. Um, we did keep a big cuttlefish once. Um, out. We caught out it. We caught lots on my shore, but. This one we got was, um, we kept it because it got us badly, but it was probably around 10 kilos. The body was like that and the head was like that size. And um, big orange one. Went and it's that 36 fathom reef, but when we got it up, um, it was still like from here to lean way and it just looked at us and straight away turned around and shot at us. I ducked. My mate said, watch out. And he said, watch. It's poured ink all down his throat <laughs> and and he had a big beard on like a he's got a big beard his beard was just like black tar and his hair was just tar black stuff and, and it just destroyed everything <laughs> so we netted it and put it in the boat and it wasn't too bad eating but it's quite thick in the flesh but it's mostly the calamari squid that that ink you that's right the, 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 the arrows do as well but not very much maybe one in five might spit a bit of ink out, but most don't. Just be gentle with them until you spike them. Yeah. Um, so back of wave breaks. That's what I'm talking about in there. I'm about to go around into there. Um, just be careful, as I said, it's quite shallow. When you see a lot of birds and that around, there's a lot of bait around normally, okay? And when there's a lot of bait around, the squid will be around somewhere. A bit seasick you're watching that there. Oh, sorry. So, I wasn't having so, all the shots or anything like through, those no, through there. No, no. I, I, I was just trying to stay yeah. home. I know, I know, mate. <laughs> I have never caught many up there. Like, they've got to be on those weed beds, and I was still at least racks, you'd think. Yeah. But um, I haven't caught many there, but no. Where that, you know, the yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, where the wreck is. Yeah. I think they'd be there too at high tide. Yeah. They may be, but I've never tried. I don't know if the arrows could go up that far. Like, I never caught it much past the Gold Coast Bridge either. They seem to yeah. stop at Sovereign and for Efren in there. Yeah, yeah. Mm. Same as the, like, when the Trevally Tr Tr School League. Yeah, they're going to go so far. Uh, Efren, and that's like. Yeah, yeah the colour point, yeah, that's right. Yeah. So, here on, in that little lagoon, um, <coughs> the, the, you might be able to see the black weed all the way around here. If you can see it, a bit hard to see, but. A lot of black weed there. So you get, you must take the weed off your hooks. So important. That we'll not touch it if you got weed on the hooks. If you get your line caught on there and have a little strand of line, we've cut it off because it gets wrapped around it. There, you just can't pull it out. And you have one little strand on there that will not touch your squidgy. You have to clean it perfectly. So you can see how far I'm casting. So don't be scared to do a long cast. As I said, in Asia and that, they're casting 60 metres or 80 metres on the cast. So that's that lighter rod there that I'm using. That's just, just a little Zodius. My kids are a little tiny, it's very small for the size that we are now. We're not little kids, it's alright. But <laughs> now it's tiny. So when the tide's like, um, and hopefully got no wind, but when it's like really on the high, or just start to trickle out, it's just a really nice time because you can actually work your squid dig really well because there's no current against it. So it's quite easy. Yeah, that's right, yeah. <laughs> After I've gone bang on the side of the boat. <laughs> I see, it, I see they come up a long way away, so as I said, cast your heart out, don't be worried about the distance. 
just keep the weight on it the whole time. As I said, even though those squid jigs are impaled, they seem to sometimes fall off. Not very often, but sometimes. So these are these are not arrow squid, these are the other squid, okay? The northern city? Northern Calamari. Northern Calamari, okay. Okay. I guess because I don't want to call Which one do you prefer for eating? Uh, that's a good question. I find they're a little bit sweeter. Um, but, uh, and then maybe a little bit softer, tiny bit softer. Uh, but I like all the squid. They're delicious, yeah. They're cool. The secret is that not that people overcook squid. Yeah, don't are you going to just give us a... Very quick. I, I will, I'll do that yeah. last, yeah. My wife's used up to good chef. So just be careful, if you grab them too high up, they will try and pull your finger around into their mouth. They've got a good size beak. I won't say the last part then. So, some people call them green eye squid. So they're 2.5, that's a red skin, red foil, and that one's a natural colour. Ah, uh, that's right, just get rid of it. <laughs> my, wife tried, my wife tried to kill me. Is that the one where you run into the rocks? She's, yeah, that's the one where she always gets me a sign of insurance before we go out. <laughs> Make sure it's up to date. So there's in leaves tinning now. So this is um, chasing the, um, the arrow squid, so a different squid now. So we're heading up to um, the, on that map, the east side of Carabao, the Karaji campground, where you're going to go, and who's going there next week? You got it next week, yeah. Nice one. Really, just hanging there. He's just hanging there. There we go. Nice. So, as I said, the squid grow very quick. And last year, this is sort of probably no, 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 no. mid-season. Uh, but last year, um, they were, the bodies got really long, and you put them in a bucket or whatever it would be. They, they bend. They, they're really weird. They sort of bend in the middle. They just fold, crease fold, and hang down the other side of it. They're, they're really, really good size. Look, I got a task would, at the side. Where you are here, would you be able to fish that from the bank? Uh, not quite, but I dare say they may be there. Yeah, yeah, because there's a bit of weed on there to, on the, to get to the outside of the weed, I think. Uh, so you can do a 30 metre cast. It does drop off pretty quick there, as you know. Yeah. Be worth trying. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, worth trying. Particularly right so in front of the campground, that's some of the best areas. They've got good muddy drop off there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 There'll be a few beers being had. Be oh, okay. Yeah, okay. Beers. Put them out in the boat. Well, they're aiming for about six and a half, seven metres of water. Um, I find that is a really good depth mate in, in most of the main channels, mm -hmm. but generally speaking, I find they like about no less than eight feet or 2.4 metres. Okay. Uh, three metres to four metres is a, is a happy area. And uh, if you can get that edge of the channel where it drops down to maybe seven or eight, that's really good. Yeah. Depends on the area. So all the western side of, of the broad water, except for up around uh, Efren and Sovereign in that area, it's mainly around about um, 2.4 to about 3.5 metres in most of the channels. Yeah, and it seems to be enough. Uh, but on the eastern channel, on that edge where it drops down from 3 to 6 is the, is the honey hole edge to work with them. Yeah. And then it sort of goes down to 8. I, I have put a few in the, in the middle, like in the deep, but that edge seems to be where they sit. So, uh, so here the currents actually oh come going this way, plus the wind's blowing so from the west as always does the winter. Down, watch your braid. When it goes it's tight, when it goes slack, it means hit the bottom and watch it. I'll tell you exactly when. Still, still it's coming down. Squid jigs are quite soft to adjust. Yeah, squid jigs, some squid jigs sl down. fall very slow. Now They're the ones that are really good for calamari, uh, for the tiger stick. You can show the weight down there, that's right. So that is one thing I have found important is that with the arrow squid, they like a heavy squid jig, and on the calamari or the tiger squid, they like a, a lighter squid jig, or, or as I said, adjusted weight. Using a tackle world 
which I think you guys have got in your split bag set, in your bag, sorry. You got a bit of both, actually. But um, they work very good. They're probably the best of the middle price ones, that are sort of 15 bucks or whatever. Squidding or Jack, Liam and I, um, we're not competitive oh, at all. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's Liam. Uh, it's never a competition if he's if he's um, in the lead. There's never a competition on. But when I'm in the lead, there's always a competition on. So we're constantly changing rods. So. You cast that one rod as it's falling. You might check the, the sleeper rod because it might have been a weed on the on the hook, so you, it's not get, doing any getting any squid. So you're checking it and you're taking the, the weed off and then throw it back out again. And at that time, you go to the other rod and hope there's one on there, or you'll start to work it. See, that's like a forty dollar mega bass I bought in Japan. It's very expensive, about twenty eight hundred yen. I haven't got a squid on it yet. <laughs> Looks like a prawn. I thought this is going to kill it, you know. And um, this is a. Um, that's. Uh, what is that? Might be a Nikki G there. <coughs> Start catching them then. Yeah, always take your tags off anything you're using when you're fishing, guys. And quite often, Liam and tell you, like quite often, uh, and for those who have done it for you, your floater to your working one, like sometimes be one on one, or sometimes even more on the floater than the casting one. So I just cast it out maybe eight meters or ten meters, maybe wind it back one turn or so. It's now going very easy. Ah, uh, they just stack up on seaweed very easy. Yeah. Um, are on rocks, they love kanji on the rocks. Yeah. So when you're casting those ones at the start on for the tiger squid um, along the edge of the rocks, you will often you let it sink down. Yeah, yeah you, you feel a bit of a pull. You think, okay, I'm on. You drive it in. So now I wait for them to pull. Yeah, they then I'll drive it in. I'm yeah. So a little squid like that, we always let them go. And grow up, get bigger. Liam doesn't like grabbing them. <laughs> That's why he gets smaller than me because I'm forever getting off his hooks. Bit like vertigo a bit watching this, isn't it? Pushing <laughs> <laughs> yeah, close. Yeah, yeah, we've um, I've had a couple actually get nailed, uh, but over time, but not really no. Yeah, yeah. Taylor. Taylor, are they? Yeah, biting them. Yeah. Oh, true. Oh, right. Yeah, okay. Oh, nice. 16 squid. <laughs> 16. You're 16, did you? 16, yeah. Well done. Wow. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> you try over this area? Uh, not that side, yeah. No, the other side, yeah. That's back left side. And just down there from all the way to the bridge, obviously. Yeah, yeah. Mm. That one was on Liam's, uh, just like those rods here, they're just sitting here, they're sitting in the depth of the bottom, and probably just above it. And just skimming just above the bottom while we're casting and trying to draw them into these squid jigs or 
And that, that quite often happens, folks. But so when you are slow winding or hopping or whatever, and you might not have a squid on that rod, but when you get it close to the boat, all of a sudden the other rod will go. And they've decided to go for that instead of the one that's on the end. Yeah. <laughs> See, we're not compared to three per person. Per person. Per person. No, no. I was that. I could have six out there, but I'm not that crazy. So. <laughs> okay. So you've six colours at once. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> Have you got ice in that bucket? No, it was actually a very cold day that day. Yeah. Um, I normally would have in my esky actually, but I think that afternoon it was just like I just said to the guys that work on going squid, <laughs> and we just did a runner yeah. and uh, went out for a quick, know, about an hour. It was about probably around 3.34 in the afternoon, it's pretty late. And they wouldn't spoil very quickly? No, mate, not at all. Yeah. No. no. We, at, we do spike them, but I don't like doing it on TV, so I don't. I think it's better not to see them spike, but then guys say to me, you don't spike a squid, but if we do, but we just don't show you which Yeah. yeah. That's the same with all the fishing videos with the snapper and everything. Pearl is really spike them as well. Just don't do it on TV. Yeah, yeah. So you'll see the squid jigs are constantly changing colours and style, because we keep changing. Even though we're getting them, a lot of time I'm, I do a lot of like research, you know, trying to see if that colour's better, or that foil, or whatever it might be, or that style, or that weight. So even though we're getting squid, I'll only maybe get a couple of squid, then I'll cut it off and try another one. If you use a little snap squid or something like that, so you can just pick them yes, up. Yes, you can. Is that going to be detrimental? No, not too much, mate. I think it'd be less than one percent. So that, that's what I'm saying, the little cl the ones you wrap around are really quick, you just take the jig off and redo it again, put another one on. Um, and I've used those, especially for the kids when they were a bit younger, and it's really easy for me just to change another jig for them. Um, so, yeah, they seem to work all right. So if you want to keep everything, you might probably get 30, 30 plus squid in a session. But there are days I've gone out and got zero too. So that you know that everyone gets zero. <coughs> Some days they just don't want to bite. I don't know what it is, they just don't bite. So if you had the wind going across the channel, yep. so say you've got a run out tide, you're going from north to south, yep. and you've got the, the wind coming from the east to push you across the channel, do you try yep. and counter that at all? Yeah, so um, in that case, I always find you, you've always got to cast with the wind. But on angle up, obviously up still. Yeah. If you try and cast against the wind, two things happen. One is you always get a bow on your lines, it's not as effective. Two is every time you do the lift up, it tip wraps. Yeah. You have that loose wrap. So you've always got to keep the line tight. So cast opposite with the wind. Cast with the wind. Yeah, don't ever cast against it. Yeah. So that's the way you're going to go to as well. Yeah. So it's more time loose in the water. So you don't mind if it's. Um you're bringing your jig back across the channel effectively? No, not at all. No, but on angle still up. Yeah. It won't be the dead flat, but uh, it'll come back air down. Because it, once it goes past the boat, if it did, like <coughs> that's by six, you just wipe back up and do it again. Okay. Yeah. Good call, though. Yeah. Yeah. So before the tide was, um, it must have been like the last of the night. So we cast the opposite way now. Maybe it's the wind come up. I've changed direction, maybe. You give it quite a aggressive. Yeah, I do sometimes. So, yeah, I'll try everything. So, if it's not happening that way, um, then I might do a big lift up or I'll let it sit for a while and I'll just do an aggressive hit. hit. It's a lot changing the squid jigs. You've got to work out what they want to do on the day. Plans the same, everything's the same. You've got to work out how they want to take the bait. But once you dial it in, you'll, then it's just non stop. Is there on? And sometimes it's like that. You get three, like I said, you get three or four casts there. 
Sir, big sir, can I lay? Come in, sir. So see how they're all little in this area? We've actually moved down a bit further. So the bigger ones are back that way, and we can't see that way. And now the little ones down the centre town, so which is in front of Karaji. So, um, yeah. <laughs> well, they'll be bigger now too, brother. So we'll do that too. If we've got two guys in the boat, you'll cast one that way, one that way, and work out where they are, and then switch. Like I said, you now cast this way with me. Although he got one that way, so. So I think um, the ends might be bigger, so that that case, I think our next drift, we went out a bit further than the channel. Well, it's not much bigger, a little bit bigger though. Let's go. Yeah, let it go. Good way. Oh, it's so seasick. Anyhow, there's a, a whole array of different squidgy things you can get. So just turn it off, buddy. Thanks, mate. Is there any questions on that at all? So you saw the technique and how we did it? All good? Okay, any questions at all so far? No, everyone's good. Clued up. Good. Okay, um, last thing is cooking. So, cooking, thanks, Liam. Good job, man. So, when you're cooking, um, there's a lot of, like, we, have anyone tried the squid yet raw? Anyone here like sashimi? Who eats sashimi? Yeah, Who of you do? Yeah. So good. It is the sweetest, yummiest taste ever. You put so, them in if you're out on the water, like if you're out. Oh, I do it back at home. I pair them back at home, but you could maybe do it out there. But to me, that would maybe be a bit wild. <laughs> <laughs> it's soft. It, well, it's soft. Yeah, it's soft. That's it's very good. soft, it's very good. soft. So, um, yeah, we just um, cut it into either into rings or strips, generally strips. Obviously, peel everything off it. Um, and pieces sort of, I don't know, about the size of that sort of thing. Yeah, just strips. And um, and yeah, just um, soy and do whatever you want. They're very, 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 very sweet. Um, and then cooking it, um, if you are going to do in breadcrumbs, because um, it it heats up so quick and and cooks so quick, you need to do like a little bit of um, um with your flour, put a little bit of baking powder in, just a tiny bit, like a half teaspoon or something like that. And um, I don't know if we put in any, I don't know what it was. Um, and yeah, that, that's the main two things, just plain flour. Um, and just put a little bit of garlic salt in there, or gar garlic powder, sorry, in the flour as well. And um, a little bit of um, salt and pepper. And then I just, I don't make like an, an egg and then that and then that. I just um, go straight from in, mixed up with a bit of soy first in a plastic bag a little bit of garlic salt again, so a bit of soy, and a bit of mirin if you want, and just shake it in the bag, take it straight out of there, and dip it straight into the flour. I'll, I'll put it all into the bag, into the, once it's dripped off, into the flour, and then shake the bag again. And you've got to be prepared, because you've got to be, put it all at the same time, because you haven't got time to slowly drop them in, unless you work a big fry pan and start at that side, and you, then they come off before the other ones come off, you know? You've got to do it all nearly at the same time it's so quick and that's where people go long wrong sorry they put it in slowly 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 and turn it over and by that time it's been like five minutes and it's gone chewy and hard and whatever so you should be able to cook it within about no more than two minutes on a high heat if you're going to stir fry it um, really nice with mayo so if you've got Japanese mayo it's really really nice in stir fry so uh, and a bit of mirin and a little bit of soy again and a little bit of garlic powder and uh, a little bit of oil and just quickly fry it, fry it, fry it. Um, and then just um, pour a bit of mayo over it for the last 30 seconds and then toss it in the mayonnaise and it's really, really nice as well. Um, and there's lots of other things we do too. Mum does heaps of things, doesn't she? Yeah. She'll get ready. <laughs> She's shy. She'll come out. But uh, <laughs> um, we might actually do, I don't think we did a cooking one on squid. I don't think we've done it yet. No, no I'll, I'll do some. 
Stanley can advise him what shouldn't have a go. It's <coughs> really good. Um, but secrets do not overcook it. That's how people get, that's how squid's tough as, and you got to soak it in coconut and kiwi fruit and whatever, whatever. You don't need to do that. So you just do this, the seasoned flour, you don't crumb it? Uh, no, we did crumb it as well. Um, and my wife does that side of it, um, but we find flour's better. Just flour. Yep. And it's like, a, not a batter mix, it's just a very light flour. Yep. Yeah. So I do my tailor. Sorry? So I do my tailor. Yeah, so you do tailor, yeah, that's right, yeah, it's nice. If you do the batter mix, um, I don't know how they get it in the shop so good, but they tend to be using calamari that are about, hoods about that big, I think, and they're quite big rings. So it's quite a bit of body to it, so it holds the batter on, okay? But when you've got little skinny ones and you get the batter's bigger than the, the squid, it tends to flick off and pop in the oil, and it's quite hard to cook. But on the flour, it stays intact on the body, on the, on the flesh, and it works really good. You use a beer as your wet mix. You don't put anything else in there. Beer's, beer's very good. Yeah, <laughs> yeah that I agree with. <laughs> yeah, it, it, it yeah. just sticks to the... Yeah, to the... Yeah, I use it in all my fish. I do a beer batter. I love, love it that way, so, as you're saying. Extremely good. Yeah. How do you take more of a salad, though? No. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no. <laughs> you can tell by that. <laughs> um, I know that's probably about it, guys. Like, um... The more you're out there, like with squid fishing, it's an easy thing. As long as you get the tide right, necessary doesn't have to be in the middle of the day, high tide in the middle of the day, you'll still catch them, right? Um, but preferably early morning because that's when the wind's not up and late afternoon. Okay? And um, just get out there and do it more and more and more and more. You've got heaps of marks here. Like, you know, I'll go to some, like, I, I, anyone be out chasing squid in the last week and see me out there at all? Oh, I went out today, but yep. How'd you go, mate? I went up to Morton. Oh, Morton, how'd you go today? Yeah. I caught one squid, but I caught a thousand wine. Oh, did you really? Yeah, dive We Were you up, up against Morton on itself or the other banks? Sandbanks? Oh, Sandbanks, yeah, yeah, yep, yep. yep. My biggest squid I ever caught in, as a tiger squid was up at uh, Bulwar Rex at Morton, which is just past Tangaluma. Um, I was casting the Rex yeah. and um, with a squid jig late in the afternoon, we were camping out there on, on the island, and um, I thought I'd a oh, tuna grabbed it because it nearly spilled me. Like it's the most powerful run. It nearly spilled me. Like, and then I got it, got it, and the body was like that, and the head was definitely much bigger than my fist. It was like a three kilo one. They go hard, really hard. But um, in the broad water, probably the biggest ones I caught, probably around two kilos. Yeah. Which you have to net. That's the only thing about the net. You must net nearly all your squid. It's just too risky because the tentacles snap off, and the big ones are too heavy. Um, and he's got more control. You just bring it in, just lift him up. Okay. Um, probably better I can tell you guys. But get out there and do it. And anything we can help with will help you out. Okay. Any other draw? Um, so the first one's about uh, just a bit over three hundred bucks for the gear. A lot of squid jigs. Um, second one is about you know, two hundred bucks for it. I think third's about one hundred and seventy bucks for it. Get in the ladder. Oh, I spilled the uh, numbers. Chop the floor. Do you have the, um, the clipboard? Oh, I don't, no. Yeah. Oh, sorry, Link, that one is. Oh, hang on, let's do it again. Oh, that's not it. No. Sorry. Sorry guys, I spilled the uh, numbers on the floor. Squid jigs you got in there are my sort of three favourite squid jigs. Sorry. And they include um, ones that I like to use on my, the bigger ones are what I like to use on my line when I'm drifting, and the other ones are when I'm casting. So always go the bigger for the sleep. 100%. 100%. Yeah. I'm just getting 
chance to have a crack. I'm just.